Bill Spain will become the first city to name and categorize heat waves. Kathy Buffman McLeod, Senior Vice President of the Adrian Arch Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center at the Atlantic Council joins us now. Now the Atlantic Council partnered with the mayor of Seville, Spain on this. We want to ask why Seville and why now? Seville is one of the hottest cities in Spain, uh, in Europe, and they had a, a heat wave nearby that hit, you know, for us in Fahrenheit, something like 118 degrees, hottest ever. And the, the mayor there, Juan Espadas, is extremely aware of climate change and climate forward and said, I want to do something about this and I want to protect my citizens from these temperatures. So, Kathy, how exactly is this going to work? I know a lot of people are familiar with naming hurricanes, but not heat waves. So uh, will it be similar? Will your organization or the city come up with a specific uh, names and will it repeat from year to year or will the names be different? Well, we've put a team together. So we've got a team of our science advisors um, from our organization and the Extreme Heat Resilience Alliance and a team from the uh, from the mayor's side. And we've got uh, people from different perspectives, you know, climatologists and meteorologists, but also human behavior specialists, because naming um, is about human behavior. We want you to be to hear that name and get prepared and take it seriously. Uh, but we also need the science behind the methodology of how we create categories and um, how many categories do we need and what do you do when you hear it's category one or two and i lived and worked in florida for 30 plus years i know what a category three hurricane is and how to prepare for it and we want to build that same culture of um, preparation and prevention and, and protect people and Kathy, is this something that would be expanded to other types of extreme weather like winter storms? Is it really just focusing on heat waves because of the particular climate there? Really focused on heat waves. This is the focus for the mayor and for um, the city. But also we think of extreme heat as the mothership of climate risks. You know, it's driving drought, it's driving flash floods, it's um, driving food insecurity and so it's something you really need to focus on and it's killing more people than any other climate driven hazard. So it's called the silent killer and people just aren't sufficiently aware of it and and we think um, this mayor and also the mayor of Athens, Greece has uh, announced the same that we'll see cities and communities and countries all over uh, picking this up. And Kathy, do you think that this is something we could see one day here in the United States? Absolutely, yes. Yes, I think we'll see um, as mayors, you know, the cities are the front line of uh, climate impacts. And I think we'll see mayors all over the U.S. thinking about how can I protect my citizens and is this something for me? Um, we'll, uh, of course, want to be working with the local agencies of the National Weather Service at, at NOAA. Uh, but I think we're going to see it here in the U.S. It's just a matter of time and good science. And Kathy, talking about that expansion to the U.S., do you think that expansion really has to be for what particular weather is impacting that community? For say, if you're talking about, you know, Montana, are you going to focus on naming winter storms because it has a larger impact on that particular state? Well, I think for us and our focus, you know, we've um, formed and launched the Extreme Heat Resilience Alliance and City Champions for Heat Action. And given the fact that it's killing more people than any other, we're really focused on heat. Um, it will be uh, a lesson, though, for any other um, weather extremes and how you could go about naming and categorizing. Uh, but we're really focused on heat um, and trying to get uh, the awareness raised sufficiently so people get prepared and protect themselves and their families.